Believers, we are 1400 almost and 38 years after Sayyidina Muhammad's Hijrah. In few days, we will be entering into that year. Muharram starts, I think, the 1st of October. And this is a time that Prophet ﷺ has foretold. At his time, Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, he said, Lam yabqa ala dunya illa fitnatun wa bala. That nothing remains of this dunya except fitna, wa bala, confusion, distortion, and bala, affliction. And that was 1430 some years ago. That the time of fitna had entered. Because Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Khayru al qarni. The best of ages, the best of times is my time. Then the one that followed, then the one that followed. Those all are the best of human beings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent. Because this is his time. Because the master of creation, Sayyid al khalq when he said, Ana Sayyidu walada, Ana Sayyidu walada Adam wala fakhr. I am the master of the sons of Adam wala fakhr. And he said, Adam wa mandunahu tahta liwa'i yawm al qiyama. Adam and, the, and all those who come after him are under my banner. This is Sayyid al Mursaleen, Imam al Muttaqeen, the best of creation. And don't think it's too much to ask, say, I say this about him. Because amongst us, unfortunately, Allah has afflicted this ummah with the greatest, one of the greatest fitness of the time. A hundred and some years ago, some of our brothers came and said, you know, Muslims are not following the true Islam. We have exclusive rights on what is true Islam. 1400 years of great scholars from the four Imams, from the Tabi'een. They don't know what we know. We know better. And they came and they poisoned the beliefs of this Ummah. And the greatest fitna they have brought upon this Ummah is they have tried to disconnect, disconnect Muslims from their beloved Prophet This is the great fitna. Because there is no Islam without Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know anything about Islam? If he had not been explaining it to you. Quran. لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله. If we have brought this Quran on a mountain, that mountain will shatter into dust. Which heart received that wahi? Which heart received that wahi? The heart of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Did it shatter? Our brothers try to convince us that you don't need him anymore. He's just a postman. Hasha thumma kalla. He brought you the book. You have the book. Forget about him. He can't help you. Astaghfirullah al azim wa atubu ilayhi. May Allah forgive them. He is Habibullah. When Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, came outside and saw the companions, they're talking about the manaqib of Prophet. وسلم. They were saying, Adam Khalilullah, Musa Kalimullah. Such great honors. Isa, Ruhullah. And Prophet ﷺ was listening. And when he said, Wa ana Habibullah. For anyone to doubt his rank with his Lord, 
Was he Habibullah only at the time he was alive? He was only Habibullah then? No longer Habibullah? Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam? This is the time of discord, of fitna, where a believer comes to the masjid sometimes and his iman is taken from him in the masjid. Why? Because they say that's shirk, brother. Don't praise him too much. Don't make salawat on him too much. Don't honor him too much. You'll be making shirk, kufr. And a, a, a person come learning love of Prophet Sallallahu from his parents and grandparents comes to this country sometimes or somewhere else, goes into a mosque and they'll tell him, your grandfather is going into hell because he's making mawlid on Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the time we live in, the time of fitan. You need love of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You're not a believer. Isn't this the teaching of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You can pray from now till eternity. Recite the Quran from now till eternity. Fast from now till eternity. And you're still not a believer. Until the love of Sayyid al Mursaleen occupies this heart. Then you may be a believer. Not before. Don't we want to be believers? Ask yourself Is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dearer to me than my parents? Dearer to me than my children? My wealth? Ask yourself, you know the answer. You want to know why the Ummah is afflicted the way it is afflicted? Because that heart is no longer occupied by the love of Prophet ﷺ. It's only occupied by love of dunya, hawa. <coughs> That's the truth. We don't want to face up to. Why is this happening to us? Why is this happening to us? What made the Sahaba? 313 in Badr, standing like lions. Was it their fuqaha? Did they go to Azhar? But that love was filling every house, every dharra of their life. That's what made them stars. That's what made them believers. Few of them was fuqaha, but most of them were drunk in the love of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يَأْتِي زَمَانٌ An age will come. When people will go to the masjid, And the, in the masjid, the only talk is about dunya matters. Prophet ﷺ said, لَيْسَ لِلَّهِ فِيهُمْ حَاجَةً These type of people, Allah has no need for them. لا تجالسوهم Don't sit with them. عَجَبٌ عجاب. Most astonishing things we hear now. You go into a masjid, and you say, let's sit and make La ilaha illallah. Let's say salawat on Prophet ﷺ loudly. Or they say bid'ah, brother. That's shirk. But you sit and talk about politics all day. No one will stop you. No one will tell you why you, you're, you're even discussing these matters all day long. But to say, Brothers, bring your children to teach them about Sayyid al Mursaleen, to teach them about this religion, which the religion of Islam, its soul is Mahabba, its ruh is Mahabba, 
It's ruh is mercy. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ it's not politics. You don't re use religion for politics. You use religion to rise upon your lowly self, for teskia, to become a real human being, to become a real abid, a real servant of your Lord, not servant of your nafs, not servant of your ego and hawa. And when you become such a, a human being, then you can serve humanity. Then you can serve others. But not before. They come now, young ones, Ahdathul Asnan, Sufahaul Ahlam. Prophet described them. They're young and their mind is not fully complete. They say the words of Khairul Bariya. They speak the words of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But they have nothing to do with him. This is the age we're living in. Your children are in danger. You are in danger. Prophet ﷺ said, this is the time when a person gets up in the morning believer, goes to sleep unbeliever. There's no doubt about his words. We are witnessing this. People go to sleep. Aqidah tamam, as they say. Their belief is mashallah. They wake up, it's a different matter. Why? How did Sayyid al Mursaleen, subhanallah, look at Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu vision? For those who doubt, how did he know? How, do, how would you back in the days, if you go to sleep, Mu'min, Muslim, how would you? You, nothing will affect your, your faith. You wake up believer. But nowadays, we have instantly, instantly people sending messages, videos, photos. You be in your house and somebody sends you a fitna. Write to your phone. Write to your TV. An imam comes and tells you, you're not on the right path anymore. If you do this, you'll be mushrik. You'll be making bid'ah. Somebody sends you a message, a text, somebody sends you a video that changes your aqidah or makes your heart to accept that fitna. And then instantly. This is the age we live in. We have to be aware of the fitna of our time. Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam, when he recited, and I will speak it in English, it's a long hadith of Sayyidina Jibreel. Most of you have heard it. When Sayyidina Jibreel came and Prophet Sallallahu Sayyidina Umar related that hadith and he said, a man entered Shadidu Sawad al-Sha'ar. His hair is like black and the desert back in the days, if you traveled, your hair is not going to be black. And his clothes are so white. Nobody has seen him before. He entered, sat in front of Prophet Sallallahu with his knees to his knees. And he said, Mal Islam to Prophet. And Prophet told him, Islam, Shahada to an la ilaha illallah, Qam salah ita zaka sawm ramadana wa hajjul bayt. And he said, Sadaqt, you told the truth. And the Sahaba were saying, Ajib, what is this strange thing? He asked the Prophet a question and then he will confirm it for him. And then he asked him, What is Iman? What is Ihsan? For those also who claim that there's no levels, all, be, all Muslims are mu'mins. No. Iman is a station that needs to struggle and jihad to attain. Needs tazkiyah to attain. Needs mahabba. Needs love of Prophet ﷺ. To take hold, then you're a mu'min. And how you will attain this love? This is the work that we should be engaged in. How we make our children not into mere robots standing and praying, but how we take, we make a mu'min. How do you want them to, don't you want them to be mu'min? How do you make them lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad 
This is the struggle nowadays that we are facing. So he asked him about Iman. And to mean Abilahi wa Malay wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wa bil yawmil akhir. And he said, Sadaqt. And then he asked him about Ihsan. He said, And ta'abud Allah ka anna ka tara. Fa in lam takun tara hu fa inna hu yarak. To worship Allah as if you are seeing him. And to know if you're not seeing him, that he is always seeing you. Always. Did he stop there, Sayyidina Jibreel? No. And then he asked him, Mata sa'a? When is the hour coming? Mata sa'a, Ya Rasulullah? Ulama say, these are the four, four pillars of religion. Because Sayyidina Jibreel, when he left, Prophet Sallallahu asked his companions, do you know who that was? They said, no. He said, إِنَّهُ جِبْرِيلُ أَتَاكُمْ لِيُعَلِّمَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ In Jibreel, this is Jibreel alayhi salam, he came to teach you your religion. This is your religion. Islam, Iman, Ihsan, and to be an expert in the science of the last days. Four things. Why we have to be experts in the signs of last days? Because you can go to sleep believer, wake up unbeliever if you're not. That's the reality we are facing. Because if you're not heedful, if you're not alert about the fitan of your time, you will be sucked in. We are seeing young kids going and joining the horrible criminals who are killing in the name of Islam. In the name of Islam. Why? Because they no longer are able to distinguish between what is right and what is wrong. They think they're doing something good, but they're doing the most abhorrent thing, the most disgusting manners they're exhibiting. And Prophet ﷺ said, تُعْرَضُ الْفِتَنُ عَلَى الْقُلُوبِكَ الْحَصِيرِ عُودًا عُودًا the fitan will be displayed on the hearts like a straw mat. A straw mat has many sticks, one stick at a time. So in this day and age, we're all witness to this. We're all witness to, to our religion being our, under attack. What we learned from 1400 years from our fathers and from our grandfathers, people are telling us is wrong now. Fitan, like straw mats, one after another, one after another, one after another. فَأَيُّ قَلْبٍ أُشْرِبَهَا نُكِتَ فِيهِ نُكْتَةٌ سَوْدًا If you're too busy in this world, in this dunya, too busy in, in collecting, and you're not paying attention to any of this, and somebody comes to you and tells you something that is contrary to the teaching of Prophet ﷺ. And he says, that's real Islam for you. And you, un maybe you're a good person, you're a good friend to that person, and you accept it in your heart. Prophet ﷺ said, if you accept that fitna, one black dot will be put in your heart. And if you reject it, one white dot. And he said, that there will be so many fitan, one after another, one after another, one after another, coming to display it on the hearts of people nowadays. That with each one you accept, with each one your heart sucks it in, you will have one black dot, one black dot, one black dot, until the heart becomes aswadu murbada, Prophet described it. Until that heart who accepts all these fitan, becomes dark, black, dirty black. And when that happens, what happens? Prophet ﷺ at that time, they will not be able to distinguish between truth and falsehood. Even you mean well, you will not be able to distinguish. Once your heart is, is darkened, you cannot distinguish. 
And you have people now in the name of Islam, in the name of Islam, slaughtering people saying La ilaha illallah. Thinking they're going to heaven because of that. Subhanallah. Look at the hadith of Prophet explaining to you what's happening to these people. This is what's happening. Their hearts are too darkened because of the fitan of the time that they can't tell what is right and what is wrong. Oh,